So welcome, everybody. I think this is uh, week 10 of 11, or month 10 of 11, because uh, we skipped December. And so we have uh, one more session after this. And, and uh, we actually have two uh, kind of um, sub chapters left and we're, we're done with the Song of Prayer. So which has uh, been fabulous. Um, so let's get into this today. Um, uh, we're still in the section on healing, and um, tonight we're going to read and talk about um, separation versus union. Uh, who would like to read first? I'm Tom, happy. Oh, carry on. You read. Am I looking at the? Oh, okay. Uh, what am I reading? The first paragraph, Ken. Uh, probably the first two. False healing heals the body in a part, but never as a whole. Its separate goals become quite clear in this, for it has not removed the curse of sin that lies on it. Therefore, it still deceives. Nor is it made by one who understands the other is exactly like himself. For it is this that makes true healing possible. When false, there is some power that another has, not equally bestowed on both as one. Here is the separation shown. And here the meaning of true healing has been lost, and idols have arisen to obscure the unity that is the Son of God. Healing to separate may seem to be a strange idea, and yet it can be said of any form of healing that is based on inequality of any kind. These forms may heal the body, and indeed are generally limited to this. Someone knows better, has been better trained, or is perhaps more talented and wise. Therefore, he can give healing to the one who stands beneath him in his patronage. The healing of the body can be done by this because, in dreams, equality cannot be permanent. The shifts and change are what the dream is made of. To be healed appears to be to find a wiser one who, by his arts and learning, will succeed. Thank you. Okay, any thoughts on this? I wonder what category it comes into, like healing where you kind of empty yourself to be a channel to let God come through. So there is an inequality, but I wonder in terms of this, whether there still is because there's there's a healer and a receiver. Uh, definitely. Um, if you're asking my, uh, yes, I my, my view on this, um, um, and I remember in the Bible, one of the most striking things, I, I, I mean, I love the Bible, the New Testament, even though, you know, we don't know exactly what was said back then, clearly, but, but it, um, I trust the Holy Spirit kind of guided the people that wrote it in English. <laughs> so we're getting some value from it. So, um, but where, where he says, you know, there, uh, you know, something like, I should, I should memorize this, but good, sir, you know, thank you for healing me or whatever. And, and Jesus rebukes him and says, don't ever call me good. Only God is good. It is he who does the healing. Mm. And, um, and I think it's this emphasis that we have a personal relationship, a personal connection. We are a personal manifestation of God. And, um, and we, therefore we are all equally that. And so from that vantage point, it's farcical to think, that one person could be channeling something for somebody else. And I think actually quite dangerous, you know, though I, I talk a lot about spiritual ego. I've been guided to, I, maybe it's because I, I have a tendency to spiritual ego, but um, you know, you, you typically talk and teach about the things that you need to learn the most. Right. Um, but, um, and, and, you know, and you can kind of get yourself into a mindset that you're bringing God to people that you're channel. And that's silly because the whole course is about seeing my brother is equal you know, is seeing 
the divinity in him. And, and so it would be, it'd be, it's very harmful to the guy that's doing the channeling to have that vantage point because he's actually seeing the, the person could or, or could lead the ego to grabbing onto that and hijacking that and seeing the person as, as um, hold on a second, as, um, um, as unequal. Um, can, is someone else a host that can let them in? Or hold on, I can do this. There's Kirsty. Um, yeah, so um, so I think that, uh, that that although that happens, it's the same with healing the body. And of course, healing the body isn't what the course is about. It, it goes to great lengths to say that, that our, our core existence is not bodily oriented. You know, I'm not a body. I am free. I am as God created me. You know, that's repeated over and over and over again in the workbook. Um, but I think that also um, the, the person that's thinking they're channeling something for somebody else um, is, is, has a danger of, of seeing the, the person they think they're channeling to incorrectly. It's much better in my mind to be open to be a channel and then have the attitude that you don't know what happened. You don't. That's, that's actually what I was talking about, Ken. Yeah, maybe we use the word channeling differently because you use the word in both. But yeah, I mean the second one where actually it's inherent. Like if I'm sitting with someone, it's inherent that there's almost a triangle of connection that both are connected to God and therefore, but one, like the like A Course in Miracles says, charity is holding like the place when someone else isn't capable of doing it momentarily, you know? Yeah, yeah, but I... I Exactly. But I always have this idea. Remember, we're just talking from our own experiences that, that, that the Holy Spirit is doing this. I never I really try and catch myself if I ever think I'm doing something. Um, I'm simply open. He's he's doing the heavy lifting. I do have a job to do, which is I have to allow him to do it. Hmm. Uh, but um, but the minute I think I'm doing something, I, I find that I'm supercharging spiritual ego. Very, and spiritual ego is very tricky. Um, it's as tricky as if you were an alcoholic. The alcoholic mind is very, very tricky. It, it tries to convince you in a million ways that taking that a little bit of an, uh, a glass of wine here and or some scenario or, or is all okay. You know, um, anybody who's had an addiction problem understands this. The the uh, the the spiritual ego is like an addict, the addictive part of the mind. It's it's um for it's out for its own sake. It's very tricky and it will attempt to persuade you. And, and so you have to become, you know, the, the course of the two things you need to do this course are, um, vi, you know, are, well, one of them is vigilance. And, um, and that, that's part of the vigilance for me anyway. And so I think it's this idea, yes, I'm available to, I get this when I'm doing workshops. You know, I do an all day workshop and people come up after, oh, I got so much of that and this change and that change. And you're so good at saying all this. And I'm like, I just have to really, really avoid internalizing any of that to know that it wasn't me doing it. It was the Holy Spirit. In fact, half the stuff I say isn't really me. I, I, I'm like, I wouldn't say that. It just comes through me in, in that for those people at that time. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a course, I'm a seminar participant at, on equal status to everybody else. I just have to be the one up there talking because I was willing to get up there and be a, be open to talking. And I certainly have no idea or connection to how my words may have affected somebody. How would you, you know, they don't even know that it could take a, so you could say something that, that, that resonates with somebody nine months later, you know, in a ways you don't even know. So the, the idea that we, we get this, that we, we think we understand the whole healing process, even for ourselves, is kind of farcical. It, but what we can know is, did we do our practices today? Whatever those happen to be for, you know, everybody's different. And, um, and you know, are we willing and open? Um, and it's really the Holy Spirit doing the healing. And so, yeah, you if you're guided to be somebody that's a channel, then you need to do that job. If I'm guided to do a workshop, I need to do that job. But but the healing is really not of me. I, I We're just, you know... Um, and if you're a medical, medical doctor and you were guided in this life, that was there, you know, um, my, my wife's sister is in, um, um, hospital right now. In fact, she just got operated on, had her gallbladder removed and that's why I'm at her, her house right now. Cause we had to pick her kids up and we were at the hospital yesterday and on the one doctor came in and the anesthesiologist and then they were so kind and they, you know, she has two nine-year-old kids and twins and they, and they, they drew little diagrams of what was going to happen to their mom and they reassured them the love and care was just phenomenal. I was, I was seriously blown away. 
and and these are medical people that are really taking care of and they're the, it, and it was, it was very very loving and so that that's the job that that guy um was guided to do in this lifetime and and but it's a lot more than just that job he's going around on the bedside and taking care of a family and their fear and and things like that and of course the the medical a lot of times medical things are journeys that we take certainly for me that um my my things that cause me a lot of fear and struggle um are are the times when i start surrendering and i, and I think surrender is so important to this path where what is surrender where we're actually dropping our plan and our perspectives on things and allowing a new perspective from Holy Spirit to arise. But we're so hell-bent on our perspective that sometimes we have to be broken down and enough um, to, to, to say, okay, not my way, your way. Now I've had enough. And this is the 12 steps, you know, for, for diction on that. My, my way isn't working your way will. And I'm now open to it because I'm, I'm giving up on my obstinance of having it my way. So, you know, um, so some, so then you think, oh, I get it. This journey through the Holy Spirit using this lifetime for our benefit, and sometimes the down times we think we have are the times when we're surrendering because we have to rely on God. We stop relying on ourselves because we can't. We can't get there. And those are the times when our faith strengthens often the most. And that's why I think the course, for me anyway, has a lot of things in it that it gets us wanting that seem impossible. Mm. You know, um, and we, a, it's A, gets us to want them, and B, they seem impossible. And, and the only solution is is to completely surrender and allow Holy Spirit to, to bridge that gap. And um, um, through willingness, you know, willingness and vigilance are the two things for the course, right? And um, not actually doing, but I, that's that's how I relate to this, just to answer your question. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Kirsty. Well, just as a matter of interest, Catherine, what was your question? Um, whether healing where you get yourself out of the way and provide that space for another person was in this category. We're on section three, separation versus union. Oh, whether right. Ken saw it in the same category or, or not. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry, I just kind of I just kind of uh, tapped into the end of it. The way I see healing is that we I don't I think this is what you were kind of trying to say a bit, Ken, wasn't it? That we don't do healing, we do forgiveness. That's our only job, it's to forgive. That's our one thing. And when we do forgive, then the healing happens. Is that sort of what you were saying, Ken? Yeah, but then some, then some, then God's doing the healing kind of thing. And our job is to, I, my problem with forgiveness is, I think you're right, Kirsty, from a, from a technical perspective. I just still, the, the, um, um, forgiveness, I, I still can't put my finger on forgiveness. That, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I, but it's, it, it's, forgiveness causes me to have to surrender deeper because I don't really know what it means at, at an intellectual level. Not fully, not fully. And I've had this for years and it's weird. And I, I know it's in the course. I know it's what we're meant to do. No, no argument. Your, your, what your statement is absolutely factually correct at an experiential level. I find myself in my practices having to, to ask for deeper and deeper understandings of what forgiveness means. And, and, and because I don't can't put my finger on it, I'm, I'm back to relying on Holy Spirit to even show me and help me to do the forgiving, um, if that makes sense. But I think that's true. But that's just my journey, by the way. That, I'm not saying anybody else should be having that experience. It's just interesting. But yeah, I think you're right. It, it, um, but I wouldn't know if you then said, what, how do you forgive? That's where I would go, wow, that's a tough one. Uh, what does that mean? You know, because um, it, in its in its full manifestation you know, a fully forgiven world doesn't exist i'm i'm now having a full experience with the course calls the real world and, you know i've never really had that and so does that mean i've never really experienced full forgiveness i don't know and, you know that that's where i get with that and it and it, it can't just be i'm forgiving the guy who cut me off in traffic that's a start and, but it's got to be so much bigger than that. It, you know, if, if, if for some reason I have the equipment, if I'm built, created to actually have an experience of the real world, it, when this forgiveness is fully manifest, I, I'm not sure I get, I'm fully 
plugged in with the whole what forgiveness means. That's a really big concept. But I, but I think, but you're right to say that because then at least we want to be doing what the course is saying and we want the forgiveness and, and because we're intending it and we're letting Holy Spirit even show us that it takes us in the right direction. So I think that's absolutely the right thing to say. I don't know. Sorry to make that overly complicated, but that's my kind of thing. But What's happened to me in the past few weeks, which has taken about 15 years of practicing the course to come, is um, when, you know, if, you, if you're going about your daily life, practicing the workbook lessons. The workbook lessons are, are really useful. They're just a very useful tool for me in keeping my eye on forgiveness. And um, if I um, see everything that comes up in my life, every kind of conflict that comes up in my life, of which there are many all the time, as something that's coming up to be forgiven, and I look on that, so I join with Holy Spirit rather than with my ego, because you always have that choice, don't you, Holy Spirit or ego. So if I join my mind with Holy Spirit and look upon this, this cartoon character called Kirsty going about this absurd script, then that is automatically forgiving because you're, you're joining with the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? It's literally just being the observer rather than um, being in the script, be uh, literally observing with the Jesus mind, Christ mind, rather than with the ego mind. And that will automatically forgive rather than actually having to do a kind of dancing around your handbag, worrying what, worrying what you've got. That's really how I've come to see it. And um, something came up yesterday, I was just walking the dog and nothing happened, but it's just a thought that came, some old forgiveness thing, some stress, some tension. And for the first time ever, I felt genuine gratitude because I thought, oh, look at this. I f this is something so big for me to forgive. And I've got this opportunity to forgive. And so for the first time yesterday, it came up is genuine gratitude, right? kind of gritted teeth type gratitude. Taking a long time for that to, to arise. It happened yesterday. Good. That sounds good. It's all the the course is very individual. I I think, um, and we need to honor and celebrate that. And um. And it's it's fascinating. But it's it's great to listen to, to everybody's journeys on it, it, but but not to compare either, you know. Um, so definitely don't listen to mine and say, oh, why why aren't I having that? Or um, it, you know, and Kirsty's meeting her things, and they're all where we're meant to be, and it's all perfect. And we all don't know where we are on the journey. And what we can know is that we're trying, we're doing our best to take it right. And so and that's very good. Okay, should we read a bit more? Who would like to read? Where are we up to, Kim? Um, can I'll read. The screen. Can you, Kirsty? Can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, and one. Note, I've got my book. I can't, but I've got my book. So, um, is it the FIP going from Kim? Um, what? yes. So it's 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 uh, bloody like Morse code. It's S dash three dot I I I dot three. <laughs> so I think that's Song of Prayer. Chapter three, section three, paragraph three. Mm. Oh, wow. so this is good, guys. So we, this next one's three, three, three. So I think that if anybody knows the, whatever the codes mean, that's good. Auspicious. Mm. Uh, yeah. So S three, Roman three. I've got that. Someone knows better. Thank there you. you go. Yeah. So if someone wants to read maybe that's three excellent. paragraphs, yeah. three paragraphs, go for it. Mm. <clears throat> Uh, I'll read. Are you reading yeah, first? Uh, yeah. No, no. Could you? Would you read, Lynn, please? Yeah. Someone knows better. This is the magic phrase by which the body seems to be the aim of healing, as the world conceives of it. And to this wiser one, another goes to profit by his learning and his skill to find in him the remedy for pain. How can that be? True healing cannot come from inequality assumed and then accepted as the truth. 
and used to help restore the wounded and to calm the mind that suffers from the agony of doubt. Is there a role for healing then that one can use to offer help for someone else? In arrogance, the answer must be no. But in humility, there is indeed a place for helpers. It is like the role that helps in prayer and lets forgiveness be what, is it, what it is meant to be. You do not make yourself the bearer of the special gift that brings the healing. You but recognize your oneness with the one who calls for help. But in this oneness is a separate sense dispelled. And it is this that made him sick. There is no point in giving remedy apart from where the source of sickness is. For never thus can it be truly healed. Shall I carry on? Yeah, one more. Healers, healers there are, for they are sons of God who recognize their source and understand that their source creates, that their source creates is one with them. Sorry, and can I just hear, read that again? Healers there are, for they are sons of God who recognize their source and understand that all their source creates is one with them. This is the remedy that brings relief which cannot fail. It will remain to bless for all eternity. It heals no part, but wholly and forever. Now the cause of every malady has been revealed exactly as it is. And in that place is written now the holy word of God. Sickness and separation must be healed by love and union. Nothing else can heal as God established healing. Without him, there is no healing. There is no love. God's voice alone can tell you how to heal. Listen, and you will never fail to bring his kindly remedy to those he sends to you to let him heal them and to bless all those who serve with him in healing's name. The body's healing will occur because its cause has gone. And now without a cause, it cannot come again in different form. Nor will death any more be feared because it has been understood. There is no fear in one who has been truly healed. For love has entered now where idols used to stand and fear has given way at last to God. Great. Wow. Thank you. Okay. So um, I, it was funny when you kind of stumbled on that. Healers are, there are, for they are sons of God who recognize their source and understand that all their source creates is one with them. If you hadn't stumbled on that, I would have just breezed right past it for me. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at that and went, that is so profound basically saying it's our our salvation is is in our recognition of oneness and you know and that's what this is all about right is that one oneness and um anyway just to make that point um and so it, it's also saying here uh in in the in the very first couple sentences that you read um you know and there is a wiser one that goes to profit by his learning and his skill to find him the remedy for pain this is really against um and we've had this problem a lot in the course community, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, I've, I've been somebody that's been done lots of workshops and written stuff and had titles and all that. And and so people look up to you and, and think, oh, you're one of the teachers of the course. And it's like, wait a minute. There's only one teacher. It's the Holy Spirit and everybody else is equal. And the, the bigger problem is if you're that person looking up to, and I know I did this for a long time, you look up to Ken Wapnicker, you look up to, and these are these are great people that have written very good things, but they're, they're we, um, but we're all one. And, and, and it's really about a relationship to me with the Holy Spirit, not making an idol of another, you know, um, what did Kirsty just call it a cartoon image, you know, the, the, which is what we are in this life or what it, something like that. So I think there's, there's value in that. I, I there, there's no problem with the, with the, in my mind, with all that until we make an idol of it. And we forget that this is the course is really about our relationship with God and with, with the Holy spirit, you, will, you know, and those two are kind of the same and with oneness and, and the spiritual ego can distract us 
and take away our power by thinking someone that has a label of a teacher has more than we have, is more than we are. And I think that's what this is getting against. And that happens a lot. Wow, if I were just where he was, if I just knew what he knew. And this is saying that's just false. And and um, you, the whole point of the course is to teach you, you, you're, you are what? You know, you are the sonship. You are it. You are one with it's It's to dispel that. Um, um, false impression. And so we, we don't want to, you know, double down on it by, by putting other human beings on pedestals and, and us being lesser than that can't be what this is teaching. So this, I think this is addressing this. On the other hand, it goes on later to say, are there rule, roles for, for people to help? And it's saying, yes, absolutely. But they're, they're, they're channels for the Holy Spirit. It's it's and they're and they're in the end they'll all lead to what this the words we stumbled on a little bit, um, remembering that you are everything God created you to be equal with everybody else and there's just oneness. By the way, just a quick technical point on oneness. Uh, if you guys don't know, the Buddhists have a good um, way of putting this: is that oneness can be can seem scary because and because the ego, the spiritual ego, can translate that into nihilism, meaning that we all. The, the, the end game here is one amorphous blob and our individuality is extinguished. And of course, if, if that's kind of what you think, it will really put you off doing spiritual work at some kind of a deep level. And this happens to a lot of people. I, I, I don't want to, you know, it's not about my physical death. I, it doesn't feel right that I would, you know, that, that, that we have all these individual, you know, we're, we're individuals on this call having a relationship with each other. And, and it's wonderful. You, you have connections with people and, and we, we were energized by the loving connections and we're, we're energized knowing there's this oneness with us and everything we're experiencing. And you can misinterpret oneness to be that that all goes away because there isn't two things to have a relationship with each other anymore because there's just one, right? And well, apparently that's not what this, the, the, it, it's the finger pointing at the moon. We're using the English language to describe things that are very, very profound. And so what, what happens simultaneously, apparently, in the real world is that, that everything that we experience here, nothing is taken away from us in, in awakening. There, nothing, it's not like that, because that would be taken away, because we can have relationships with each other now, but we can't then. That doesn't make sense. So what actually ends up happening is that there is still the ability to be in relationship. And they, they describe it as points of light, but these points of light are... Um, are connected. There's no sense of separation, but there's also a sense of being able to have an experience of each other and of creation itself. And so it's almost like our role, our real role is to be experiencers of God's creation and, and, and in, in full enlightenment or whatever you want to call it. Um, we, we just have the sense of continuous awe and gratitude for, for the, for, for creation and the ability to have an experience of creation and an experience of other beings and, and a pure love, something like that. So, so th they, they label that as oneness, but it's not nihilism. And the, and the Buddhists are really, really quick to point that out. Cause if people think it's nihilism, they're not going to want to do this, you know, cause it's why, why would you, you know, if, if I'm going to just going to disappear and there's going to be no individuality, there's no motivation or purpose, frankly, in spiritual work, none at all, you know, um, because I, I, I cease to exist anyway, but that's not what happens. Uh, nothing. It, it, my, my experience is simply enhanced by a, a million times. And, uh, and my experience of you is enhanced by a million times and it's awesome and that kind of thing. But um, anyway, that's that's what the Buddhist would say. Um, um, good. Any other comments on this section? Where it says the thickness and separation must be healed by love and union, and to me that is really looking beyond the idea of the personality completely. Um, everybody who I know in the world, including people who I love very much, uh, like my children, for example, um, have a personality. Um, and um, every single aspect of personality whether it be good or bad, according to the judgment, 
needs to be forgiven in order to understand oneness and uh, in order to understand healing. And I think what you were saying, Ken, about, you know, putting people on a pedestal like Ken Wapnick and that kind of thing. I think what that brings up for me, the need to forgive not just people who have triggered you and who have hurt you, but also people who you value as mighty companions than anyone else. They equally need forgiveness because forgiveness is about seeing beyond separation, seeing beyond the personality into the actual oneness that is. And that for me is something that I'm really hitting the bedrock of now. How forgiveness is, you know, wonderful situations that might occur in my beautiful bits of luck and stuff. They all need forgiving just as much as horrendous luck. People I have special love relationships with need forgiving as much as people I have special hate relationships with because, because they're, the, they're two sides of the same coin. So really what we're being asked to do is massive, I think. Massive to the, nothing to Jesus, but absolutely massive to the ego. Thanks, Kirsty. I, um, and I think that is just super insightful. Um, I've had this, I've had this sense. I mean, I've been with the course since the early '90s, so we're into decades, but and at least the last twenty years, um, uh, of exactly what you said that, that that forgiveness is of everything. And I and I've and I've really nobody. I, I, so I don't talk about forgiveness anymore because everyone said, when I said, well, no, but it's, it's the same. It's two sides of a coin. Like you said, it, it, it would have to be because it's all the illusion. It, whether I'm thinking of a bad teacher or a good teacher, it, it's, it's all the same stuff. If I really want to get the big picture of what this is all about, it's all the same stuff. And, um, and, and I find it, that's why I think I've struggled with it on study groups agreeing with people what forgiveness is because I've always had the sense it's much bigger than just forgiving the guy that cut me off in traffic or forgiving my, my father. Those are definitely part of it. And those aren't bad. I'm not saying that, but, but it's really the big picture is just what you just said uh, very elo eloquently. And I think that's a very, that's a very scary realization to come to. I agree. And I agree with you about the personality stuff. What gives me hope um, inspiration is you, you know, lots of times, even on this call tonight, we mentioned, Jesus, as if it's a living, Jesus is a living thing in our presence right now. Even Eva in the first, uh, when she opened the session, invited Jesus in to be with us. And I think we all really relate to that. So clearly there's something that, that, and, and that is there that, that like, and I know when we, in, in our, in, in our meditations, you can get to a point in meditation where you're, you have a sense of being aware. And you can be aware of gaps opening and, and expansiveness and things. And your, your sort of sense of your identity as a body is gone very temporarily, <laughs> granted. But, but, so, so that, but what it means is we have the ability to have awareness of ourselves as, as something um, without the personality. It, 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 you know, we don't, we're not, it, we can, and it's there, it's sitting there. The ego tries to hijack our experience, but it's sitting there. And then, and then we say we intuitively have this experience with this energy, if you will, called Jesus. That, that again is 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 that energy beyond the personality, and so that should inspire us. That because Jesus is in the course is teaching us that we're like Him, and 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 so that should inspire us that that we're not going to be the, the good the good parts of whatever we are as a created as part of God are, are left, and, you know, and uh, when this is done and, and, uh, or the process is finished, something like that. We need inspiration, I guess, is where I'm going with this and see, because sometimes this idea can get depressing and, and you go, well, no, I get it. I, the, the Kirsty's right. The personality stuff is a problem, good and bad, the, the, but, but that's not who I am. 
uh, there's something below that that is who I am, my true identity. And, and that identity will be able to experience love and it will be able to have an experience still with Jesus. You know, will I, will I when I'm awake, be able to have an experience of some semblance with Jesus? And the, you intuitively go, yeah, if I can do it now, I can do it then. He clear, we can clearly have an experience with him. So something like that. So we can be inspired by that maybe. I don't know. So Jesus does say in the course, I think, I might, I might have this wrong, but I think Jesus says in the course, forgive me doesn't he he wants us to forgive him and i've always thought well this business about forgiving jesus is all about you know when we misunderstand um misunderstand the the metaphysics and we misunderstand the script we can think that it's all jesus's fault we can project you say oh jesus has done this to me and this is this is why we need to give Jesus, because we project a load of shit onto him. But I'm starting to realise now that Jesus didn't really mean that, or he did on one level. He talks to two levels, doesn't he? But on another level, what he means is forgive me for being a separate person who you think is separate from you. Because I'm not, I am you. That's who I am. There's no separation. There's no oneness. And that's where, what I think that's what he really means when he says, forgive me. Yeah, the wording <laughs> I can think of, Kirsty, is he says, forgive my, forgive me for your illusions about me. Yeah. So, that, yeah. And I that think that could be the pedestal or the, or the, you're not coming through for me, couldn't it? It could be both. Or being, or being yeah. someone we project guilt on, our guilt onto. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we've killed the Son of God or killed the Christ or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. I mean, I've always said, Lynn, that it's, I've thought that Jesus, I, the forgiven, what, what Catherine just, um, I always thought that that meant, um, for, for all the guilt I projected onto him, but it's all said well, just the pedestal thing as well. Forgive because we all, all people who love Jesus do do put him on a pedestal, don't they? Oh, Jesus, you know. And I think that that's really what he's trying to get us to forgive this idea that he's any different from us in truth. That's only just occurred to me in this moment. <laughs> I, Christy, I think you're right. And I, I think we are really getting to the essence of what forgiveness is. It's, it's, um, it, it's letting go of everything that's stopping us from seeing the true nature of reality, or at least being willing to. And, you know, one of the most powerful uh, course lessons, and they're all powerful, but that, that it comes to my mind at this moment is where it's, it, it has us do in a little meditation or whatever it is. You sit in quietly and it says, forget everything you think you know forget everything you've learned and, and forget this course mm. Mm. and allow yourself to quietly go down in the Holy spirit. I think it's something like the Holy spirit to show you. One eight nine, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Forget this course, you know, um, forget everything you think, you know, and, you know, and um, in Buddhism, they say that Buddhism is a raft taking you across the river. And when you reach the other side, you, you have to discard the raft. And, and so that's, that's encouraging us into experiences it, 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 and that's that's forgiveness, isn't it? For let go of everything that you're hanging on to that this is meant, and allow and to have a, an experience of real reality as it is. Because we're it's it's as if we're so our minds are movie projectors, and and we're just projecting. And pro I remember when Shen Pen, the, the Buddhist teacher, some of us has met, said to me once, said to us once in a session. That, that when you're doing meditation, you know, you think you're there quietly having an experience of reality and everybody's off ideas. And she said, 97% of it is contrived mm. and you just soul destroying. That means you've, you're making up your meditation experience, <laughs> you know, and it's like, but 3% isn't that you're, it allows glimpses, who knows if it's 3% or whatever, it allows glimpses to come through and of, of something else where we just for a moment, it's it's like a TV is constantly running. And you know, if someone like the, the power goes out just for a moment, the TV stops for a moment and then it comes back on. Or they 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 say it's like um, you know, fabric and the fabric for just a moment has a tear in it and then it repairs itself very quickly. But there is there is the there is real reality 
out there that we can have an experience of, but we have to let go of this incredible movie projector that we're doing. And that's what a lot of the process is doing. So the into the movie projector comes things like the course, comes icons like Jesus and, and even in human form, Ken Wapnick and all that. They're all incredibly helpful, but they're in the movie. And so at some point, if, if we're going to get beyond the movie, we have to let go of the icons and all the teaching and everything and allow the real world to come to us, you know, uh, to we allow something else. And the ego definitely hates this. It definitely hates to lose control of the of the movie that it's creating. And so spiritual ego creates all kinds of spiritual movies to entertain us now. And um, but Holy Spirit uses those. And but eventually, slowly but surely, we start to let go of our grip. And slowly but surely through through gaps and things like that, and really through the grace of God, I think more than anything, by grace I am released, right, as a course lesson, um, we, we, it starts to dawn on us, you know, but it just seems to take time. But um, anyway, that's my experience. The illusion, the illusion of time, isn't it? It's, a it's weird, isn't it? It's weird, isn't it? it? But in the course is 365 lessons in time, but there isn't any time to do this. It's weird. It's a, it's one of those things. It's that's a, something Jesus says in, in the course. Um, um, for, oh, God, I can't remember it, but it's something like infinite um, forgiveness now, infinite patience is what is required. Brings the, immediate reward, I think. Yeah. But you, gosh, Catherine, you're an extraordinary encyclopedic knowledge of the course. I don't think I am. I don't think I am. Um, I may but, be wrong. But that's, was, how, that's how I say it. I say some things and they're not, when I look them up, they're not quite right. But I've been saying them for so many years and they sound right. Um, hang on, I'm just going to, uh, well, anyway. Um, what, just say it again, Catherine, because I think you're absolutely In, right. What was infinite it? Infinite patient brings immediate reward yeah that's it so what does that mean infinite patience because i've always thought of infinity I've, infinity has been a a term that i've been familiar with since i was a child you know it's kind of the the, the term that you use when you to trump somebody in a numbers game aren't you when you're a kid infinity but actually it doesn't mean infinite it doesn't mean endless time it means no time doesn't it that's actually what infinite means it's no time at all and so you need to infinite patience really it means let go of the future Kirsten, let go can, I, can i just say i've looked it up just to yeah. disillusion you that i know the course of well infinite <laughs> patience produces immediate effects that's it that's it yeah so infinite patience, in, or, in order to, infinite patience really means letting go of resistance, doesn't it? I think. Infinite patience, in other words, you don't have to be patient forever. It's you just have to let go of resistance. Yeah. Really? Infinite, as you said, is like yeah. no, no limit. It's not a linear thing. It just means unlimited. Exactly. It's not linear. It's not finite. It's not going on and on and on and yeah. on forever. Yeah. Just outside time. Mm -hmm. So infinite. What is it again, Catherine? Infinite, infinite patience brings immediate effect. Yeah. So uh, to me, that is, if you've got infinite patience, it just means that you're not, um, not going along a timeline, thinking when is this going to happen? When is it going to get better? When, you know, so on. The biggest question that people ask: When, 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 and letting go of the when. That's what infinite patience means, I think. And then let go of all resistance, and that's immediate, immediate being in our moment. Good. That was good. All right. Um... Do we read the holiness of healing? Because there is such, we haven't got long to go on this now. And this passage, so beautiful. Yep, here we are. That's our next section, Kirsty. Go it's, for it. Um, it's the I most need, gentle, most beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Possibly the most beautiful passage in the whole book, I would say. All right, over to you. Do it. 
I think I'm just going to read it because I think it would be dangerous. Interrupt. That's okay. okay. Yep. Just check I've got enough charge on my phone here. The holiness of healing. How holy are the healed? That in their sight their brothers share their healing and their love. Bringers of peace, the Holy Spirit's voice, through whom he speaks to God, whose voice he is, such a God's healer. They but speak to him and never themselves. They have no gifts but those they have from God. And these they share because they know that this is what he wills. They are not special, they are holy. They have chosen holiness and give up all separate dreams of special through which they can bestow unequal gifts on those less fortunate. Their healing has restored their wholeness so they can forgive and join the song of prayer in which the healed sing of their union and their thanks to God. As witness to forgiveness, aid to prayer and the effect of mercy truly taught, healing is blessing. And the world responds in quickened chorus through the voice of prayer. Forgiveness shines its merciful reprieve upon each blade of grass and fresh wing and all the living things upon the earth. Fear has no haven here. For love has come all its holy oneness. Time remains only to let the last embrace of prayer rest the earth an instant as the world is shined away. This instant is the goal of all true healers, whom the Christ has taught to see his likeness and to teach like him. Think what it means about the Christ to heal. Can anything be holier than this? God thanks his healers for he knows the cause of healing himself. His love, his son, restored us his completion and returned to share with him creation's holy joy. Do not ask partial healing, nor accept an idol for remembrance of him whose love has never changed and never will. You are as dear to him as is the whole of his creation, for it lies in you as his eternal gift. What need have you for shifting dreams within a sorry world? Do not forget the gratitude of God. Do not forget the holy grace of prayer. Do not forget the forgiveness of God's Son. You first forgive, then pray, and you are healed. Your prayer has risen up and called to God who hears and answers. You have understood that you forgive and pray but for yourself. And in this understanding you are healed. In prayer you have united with your source and understood that you have never left. This level can be attained until there is no hate in the heart and no desire to attack the Son of God. Never forget this. It is you who are God's Son. And as you choose to be Him, so are you to yourself and God to you. Nor will your judgment fail to reach to God, for you will give the role to Him you see in His creation. Do not choose a myth, or you will, or you will think that it is you who are creator in his place, and he is then no longer cause but an effect. Now healing is impossible, for he is blamed for your deception and your guilt. He who is love becomes a source of fear, for only fear can now be justified. Vengeance is his, his great destroyer, death. And sickness, suffering and grievous loss become the lot of everyone on earth, which he abandoned to the devil's care, swearing he will deliver it no more. Come unto me, my children, once again, without such twisted thoughts upon your hearts. You still are holy with the holiness which fathered you in perfect sinlessness and still surrounds you with the arms of peace. Dream now of healing, then arise and lay all dreaming down forever. You are he your father loves, who never left his head, nor wandered in a savage world with feet that bleed, and with a heavy heart 
made hard, made hard against love, but is the truth in you. Give all your dreams to Christ and let him be your guide to healing, leading you in prayer beyond the sorry reaches of the world. He comes for me and speaks my word to you. I would recall my weary son to me from dreams of malice to the sweet embrace of everlasting love and perfect peace. My arms are open to the son I love, who does not understand that he is healed, and that his prayer never cease to sing his joyful thanks in unison with all creation in the holiness of love. Be still and instant. Underneath the sound of harsh and bitter striving and defeat, there is a voice that speaks to you of me. Hear this an instant and you will be healed. Hear this an instant and you have been saved. Help me to wake my children from the dream of retribution and a little life set with fear that ends so soon it might as well have ever been. Let me instead remind you of eternity your joy grows greater as your love extends along with mine beyond infinity where time and distance have no meaning. While you wait in sorrow, heaven's melody is incomplete because your song is part of the eternal harmony of love. Without you is unfulfilled. Return to me and never left my soul. Listen, my child, your father calls to you. Do not refuse to hear the call for love. Do not deny to cry for it alone. Heaven is here, heaven is your home. Creation looms across the bars of time to lift the heavy burden from the world. Lift up your heart to greet its advent. See the shadows fade away in gentleness. The thorns fall softly from the bleeding brow of him who is the holy son of God. How lovely are you, child of holiness. How like to me. How lovingly I hold you in my heart and in my arms. How clear is every gift to me that you have made, who healed my son and took him from the cross. Arise and my thanks be given you. And with my gratitude will come the gift first of forgiveness, then eternal peace. So now return the holy voice to me. The song of prayer is silent without you. The universe is waiting your release because it is its own. Be kind to it and to yourself and then be kind to me. I ask but this, that you be comfortable and live no more in terror and in pain. Do not abandon love. Remember this, whatever you may think about yourself, whatever you may think about the world, your father needs you and will call to you until you come to him in peace at last. Brings me to tears that last little bit every time. Really beautiful, I think. Thanks, Christy. It was. Yeah. And I, I'm glad you read that in its entirety. That was that was a great call. Thanks. Mm. All right. Where do we go from here, guys? Uh, does anybody want to comment, uh, return to any of the sections we just read or what do you, would you like to discuss? What I really love about this is that the, the the last paragraph, paragraph 10, where it says, remember this, whatever you may think about yourself, whatever you may think about the world, your father needs you and will call to you until you come to him in peace at last. And this is so beautiful to me because what it makes me feel is, you know, my ego mind is very much um about your you know you're not necessary for the 
you know, you're not necessary for the, for the sonship. You're not, you know, you're not really, you know, or, you know, the whole idea about being back, that kind of thing. And this is so profound. Your father needs to fall to you until you come to him in peace at last. And it's just everything, that, what this presents to me, every single moment of my life is, is my father calling to me until I come to him in peace at last. So many of my forgiveness opportunities in my life, if I look back on are the same, the same forgiveness is presented again and again and again. And if I side with ego, which I do all the time, I, I consider myself to be seriously persecuted and punished. But when I read this with my right mind, and I see the forgiveness opportunities presented again and again, I realise that this is God or Jesus calling to me until I come to peace last. And it's just a completely different interpretation of an experience of life from one of persecution and hatred to one of deep love. I don't know if anyone else has left with that. I think deep faith in us as well as love, Kirsty, like uh, a confidence that we will eventually wake to who we are and so are not giving up on us. Yeah. What was that? Sorry. A, a faith in us, did you say, Catherine? You're breaking up. So uh, did you say a deep, I said a deep faith in our ability you know we we might be thinking am I going to make it am I but it's like of course you're going to wake up that's who you are so at some point you're going to know that yeah absolutely absolutely yeah it's so easy to kind of feel oh this isn't for me <laughs> this isn't for me mm. this is some major cosmic play, something like that mm. um, that's that's a very very easy thing to think but, um, sorry, my son's wandering in and out. Um, but, yeah, but, um, you know, it's, 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 our, it's not God abandoning us, it's us abandoning God. I think that's really, it's really the essence of it for me. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole of Course in Miracles is about days for me, or the whole of the work is about days, different days, separate days. Um, and for me, it's become really about looking at these, you know, going through days as a kind of exploration of what is there in my mind that needs forgiving in order to understand this. And return and something that I've known theoretically for like 15 years or something. Um, I've known that for about 15 years, but I only just now am I starting to actually break it. So it's um, yeah. So it's um, it's beautiful. Yeah, I love that section. Um, I have another. I have a quote that on this another way to look at oneness. Um, it says. The wave is the same as the ocean, though it is not the whole ocean. So you have a wave in the ocean, but it's not the whole ocean. So each wave of creation is part of the eternal ocean of spirit. The ocean uh, cannot exist without the waves, but the waves can also not exist without the ocean. And I like that. So it's, it, the in it, so it's it's getting to this thing of the we don't. There is a a level of in in the real world when we're completely awakened um of you know it's something really worth um 
experiencing and and because we will you know we'll have be, be will be one with all the waves but the waves will also have their I, I don't I, I hesitate to use the word individuality because that maps back onto personality and it, but it is something like that there the way the Buddhists put it is you will be able to have relationship with with other points of light and, and you know you you don't just disappear and and because you can have it now nothing's taken away from us and you know and and it's wonderful something like that so anyway good anybody else got any comments on this? Very powerful text. Anyone want to make a comment, last comment on it before we close? No, I think we're done there, Ken. Okay, well, I think we, we were, um, my camera doesn't work, Kirsty. We've been through that before you came on. Um, Sorry, we play something then, sorry. No, I was just, there's so much in it, uh, especially this last bit. I mean, I was just going to comment on um, section five, where he says, never forget this, and then talks about, as more or less, as we relate to our brothers, so we relate to God, um, and nor will our judgment fail to reach to God. Um, and, it, and it talks about we, what we do when we do this is to um to actually try and replace him so that he is no longer the cause but only an, an effect oh, and it's yeah. so powerful Thank that. You for bringing that up lynn yeah, that that is, me so much when i was reading it that i was actually going to interrupt myself mm. and mention something but then i thought no i'll keep going but thank you for mentioning that isn't that yeah. amazing? It's no longer a cause, but only an effect. Yeah, it's, and, it, and it really just sort of, for me, it really does just pull me up short because it just reminds me that I, I'm not able to judge, but I spend most of my time judging in this world. You know, and as we all do, we have to. Well, I'm saying we have to. It feels like we have to judge on everything, doesn't it? This is good. This is bad. This is right. This is wrong. And it, uh, yeah, and and how we judge our brothers. But uh, it, yeah, that it really just pulls me up. That that that, that actually, you know, I, as I. It, the, I mean, I think there's something in the course as well, isn't it? That says, as I see my brother, as I treat my brother I, I will treat myself and as I see my brother I will see myself and and something you know a few lines like that um so yeah. I really do, do want to remember that that God is not an effect he's a cause he's the cause so yeah I just wanted to yeah share thank that you. Tension thank you for mentioning that it's um yeah um yeah and it, yeah, oh, it's, sorry, I've just got it. And it says, he, now healing is impossible if I'm seeing God as an effect, for he is blamed for your deception and your guilt. Not that he's saying, you know, I am guilty, but in my mind, if I'm doing that, I am thinking I'm guilty and just projecting it back onto God. Um, yeah. We all do that, or I, I wouldn't say we all, but most people do that, don't we, when life is going badly and we yeah. you know terrible happens and our world collapses we think thanks god cheers yes. you know <laughs> yes you're doing this to me yeah yes yeah. yeah but actually you know um i remember receiving a message from the holy spirit once um when i was going through something terrible and it said this um you know that you can't it's such I'm like you can't help and because it's um because it was a script that was written long ago you know um all you can do is forgive it and to me that sounded like you know god had written this script um and so i'm blaming him for this, this absolute crap show but actually that's not what it means at all you know the ego writes the script 
because the ego is an illusion. The script is written by the ego, but the Holy Spirit, if you forgive it, will give you a different version of events, the yeah. forgiven world. So there's absolutely nothing to blame God for. <laughs> or, but you know, we all do, don't we? But doing that, we look at him as a, yeah, yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful passage. It really is wonderful. Sorry, I, I, were you going to say something before then? I don't know. Can't remember, Lynn. Okay. Can't remember. Delinda or either want to add anything before we close? No, I'm good. Thank you. Well, thanks, guys. We got through the whole book. We did it in uh, just under a year, right? That's and good. Lynn, were you going to say something then? Is that me, Kirsty? Well, you, you're back on mute, but you weren't a second ago. You're off now. Yes. Yes. One of the bits I had already highlighted um, was in paragraph four. Um, in prayer, you have united with your source and understood that you have never left. This level cannot be attained until there is no hatred in your heart and no desire to attack the Son of God. Never forget this. It is you who are God's Son, and as you choose to be him, so you are to yourself and God to you. So I've highlighted that um, in, before, and I've read it before, and that really speaks to me. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd let you hear my voice. <laughs> Yes. Never forget this yes. because you, you are God's son and you and as you choose to be him, so you are to yourself and God to you. Yes. So reaching the real world, disbanding our you know, let go of our false character that we separate ourselves and becoming one is about seeing everyone. Yes. As God sees us without yes. judgment. Yes. Yeah. Yes, to see everyone as this light, love, and peace. Um, yeah. So that's never forget this. Highlighted. Never forget. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I thought I'd just just let you hear my voice. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Lovely to hear your voice for the second time today. <laughs> um, so I think we're done, guys. Finished the song of prayer course. So um thank you, Ken. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. Yes. The Holy Spirit. And Diva. <laughs> Everyone. Yes. Did you see your camera's broken, Ken, today? Yes. It is. We we found that out. I, I I was talking like a talking head, so I had to turn it off. It was vibrating. Okay, we're pretty that we can't see you to say thank you properly. No, no problem. That is what I, I look I, like. So yeah, <laughs> we know what you look like. So yes. um, yeah. So thank you. I had quite a few um, quite a few people who couldn't make it tonight. Who said we'll see you next month? But I think we I will email out that we're now complete with the song of prayer but um, yeah it's been wonderful nearly a year I think it's about 11 months or 10 months I think we missed Christmas as well didn't we but yeah thank you so much Ken for joining with us uh, for you know for this you know for this journey through the song of prayer it's been absolutely a wonderful experience. thank you so much for that and yeah. um Eva, would you like to um, just close in a little bit of a, a prayer or shall I do that? Yeah, you can do it. So, 
So um, we just join with Holy Spirit in our mind. And I'd like to thank Holy Spirit, thank each other. Thank God. This wonderful opportunity for joining with our mighty companions at the end of this beautiful journey. And please guide our way from here on in. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, and it's been lovely. Thank you so much for joining with us, and I'll see you all soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks everyone.